All right, <clears throat> taking what is uh, probably my last drive of my Rivian out. Um, wanted to start off with sort of this view, uh, talk about some stuff with this thing and, and um, sort of why I'm trading it in. Um, let's see here. So for starters, I just want to start off with this, right? Okay. So I've been driving this thing around town, um, you know, five miles, three miles, two miles, whatever here and there. Uh, and this is, this is my, um, this is my average right now. One mile per kilowatt, 1.09. It gets better than that, but, um, that's what it's at right now. Uh, and so, right. So 1.9, 1.09 per miles per kilowatt. You're looking, the battery capacity of this thing is allegedly about 127 usable. I think that they found out it's like 140 kilowatts overall. Um, capacity wise and they'll probably up 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 grade whatever the um, usable capacity in the future most new autom automotive uh, manufacturers do that with electric cars um, because they want to start off um, with a, a lower usable capacity to save the batteries um, but as time goes on they find that the batteries aren't wearing as fast as they thought they would so they up the capacity so anyway at 1.09 you're looking at about um, I don't know, 140 miles in range, 150, <laughs> because it looks like this outside, and that's driving around town. That's not very good, uh, and it's it's annoying me, and it's probably the primary reason I'm trading in my Rivian. Um, all right, so now let's let's take this bad boy for a spin. Let's just remember that figure. <clears throat> Boop. All right. How's that angle? Sound pretty good. Yeah. Let's take a look here. Yeah, that should work. All right, so the Rivian. Put on my sweet belt. Pop her in a reverse. And off we go. Um, so first and foremost, <coughs> the uh, one of the things I actually don't like about this car and do like at the same time, the climate control system is pretty terrible, oddly enough. I don't know how Rivian managed to get climate control wrong, um, but they sort of did. Uh, it's very, very noisy. There's no ability to configure the intensity of the climate, so it makes a lot of noise. Uh, you probably hear the noise more because it's an electric car. Um, but it's also like oddly, you know, if I set it to 70, in winter it'll never really get to 70. I don't know, maybe the sensor's in the wrong place or what, but it, it'll still be quite cold in here. And then like, so my wife was just driving the thing. It was at 74. Uh, and now it is, so I just got in it and it is toasty, which is, which is one of the, the upsides of it. It heats up very quickly. Obviously it burns through the battery quite quickly. Ooh, one thing I wanted to note, actually, let me do a reset, right? Let's reset this trip. Okay. So now we're at zero on the trip. I'm starting off now with 62%. Let's just remember that. Okay. 62%. So anyway, so my wife had it at 70 uh it or 74 rather it got very toasty in here pretty quickly which is which is a good thing about the um the hvac in this thing um but then i was like okay that's a little bit too warm let me bump it down to 72 and now it's blowing cold air at me <laughs> it's it's the middle of winter it's 43 degrees outside i don't need cold air blown at me i just need you to calm down with the hot air um, and it'll continue to blow cold air at me for a while um, and it really really annoys me to the point and now this is with HVAC set on auto uh, which I, I don't know what kind of monster wouldn't just use the auto mode I, I cannot stand when people are like no I want it cooler I want it hotter I'm just gonna fiddle with the buttons just set it to the temperature you'd like and have it be that most cars when you set it to the temperature you like it just becomes that temperature in here uh, it doesn't. It it does all sorts of crazy stuff. So what I usually end up doing is turning off the H, uh, the auto feature, bumping down the fan, 
um, and uh, and setting it uh, to whatever temperature I, I like. And if I need to bump up the fan, then I'll bump it up manually. Um, but right now I've got it set to auto and it's still blowing a little bit of cold air on me. I didn't need you to cool down the cabin that quickly. I just needed you to calm down with the heat. Um, so let's talk about driving the Rivian. I mean, there's a million reviews of the Rivian out there. Um, I'm not really trying to do yet another review of the Rivian. I will say, uh, or a standard issue review of the Rivian. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm trading in my Rivian. Uh, and I wanted to take it for a spin right before I trade it in for, um, what I'm trading it in for is Jeep Gladiator, Rubicon diesel. Um, but before we get to that, let's talk about the Rivian a little bit more. So now I'm drive, driving along. Uh, this is my, so my first issue with the Rivian is the range in winter. It's horrendously bad. And you'll see how bad it is. I'm not even gonna talk about how bad it is. Um, you'll see how bad it is by the end of this video. I, like I said, I started out at, let's be generous and call it 62%. It was really 63% when I turned on the car. But let's be generous and call it 62%. And then I'll drive some miles and you'll see how quickly the battery runs down in this thing. It's absurd. Um, but my second and really only second issue with this car is how it handles um, sort of quick hit bumps. Now this road I'm going down right now uh, is pretty bad and I'm doing that on purpose uh, it it actually the air suspension handles rolls um, and and just the general ride very well but the car handles quick hit bumps like cracks in the road um, and potholes now maybe that's like a New England thing uh, and I'm sure it is um, because our roads here get trashed over the winter um, but it really handles those kind of hits really badly. Um, it almost reminds me of like my, like, uh, I had a E, God, what was it? I guess it was an E90 three series that, uh, it was, it had the sport suspension blow and it really handles potholes and such really, really badly. And it just, it sends it straight up into your spine. And I think that there's two issues. Well, maybe three issues causing that. Uh, I don't think anybody has ever done independent suspension as long travel as this is. And maybe that's a part of the problem. I don't know. Uh, the second issue is issue, quote unquote, is the air suspension. Um, air suspension, to my understanding and in my experience, doesn't handle quick hit sort of potholes and cracks in the road as well as coil suspension does. Um, and that's a part of the problem. And I think the third part is the weight of this thing. Um, I just think that having 7,000 pounds go over like a quick pothole or something like that, there's just no suspension in the world that's going to be able to deal with that well. Um, but with that said, uh, there's really not much else that I don't like about this car. The major, major reason I'm trading it in is because to me, a truck is something that you can drive six, 700 miles in one shot, stopping for fuel, electricity, whatever, uh, for five, 10 minutes, taking a leak, grabbing some beef jerky and continuing on with your day. Uh, you just can't do that in this car. And I, of course I knew that I've had an electric car before. Um, and I was sort of ready mentally to deal with a range of maybe 275 miles in reality from 100%. Uh, and I could probably get that in summer. I feel like I could. In winter, there's not a chance though, unfortunately, uh, unless I was to change my driving habits incredibly, uh, which I'm not gonna do. Um, a car is not gonna dictate how I drive. Uh, I am going to tell the car how to drive. So what I've been getting for the most part in this car uh, if I put it in conserve mode, which switches it to front wheel drive, um, and I cruise on the highway for a long period of time, I can almost touch two miles per kilowatt, and that's in the middle of winter um, in conserve mode <clears throat> from 100%. Uh, usually I, I end up right around like 1.8 ish, something like that, but I have touched two before. Now let's remember that's in conserve mode again. Okay. So you're not really supposed to use conserve mode all that much, but in winter you kind of have to with this thing. If you don't use conserve mode, I sit around 1.5 to 1.6 miles per kilowatt, which is horrendously bad. Um, so uh, you can do the math in your head, but again, it's about 127 kilowatts usable. So in winter, 
sensor and conserve mode in this thing um, while it was claiming I could do uh, uh, let's see here while uh, I was doing two miles per kilowatt let's call it 127 let's just call it 250 miles of range it's not it wasn't I wasn't even able to touch that much I mean I could do 220 miles uh, from 100% um, down to basically five to zero percent uh, in one charge and that's really bad and that's from 100% in conserve mode with nothing in the bed uh, if I was to use Standard mode, uh, the range would probably be more like 200, maybe even 190. Um, and if I was to throw a motorcycle in the bed, which is sort of why I have a truck, um, I think the range in conserve mode would be about 190 miles. Standard mode, forget it, don't even bother. Uh, and that's really killing me with this thing. I, I, like I said, it's the middle of winter here in New England. All I want to do is throw my motorcycle in, in, the, in my pickup bed, drive south, uh, and enjoy a few days of motorcycling. And I just, I can't do it with this truck. Um, stops at fast chargers to 80% are realistically going to take an hour with this truck because the battery is so big. Um, so that, it's really just killing me. But honestly, almost everything else about this truck I like. I don't like, the, the suspension could be better. Um, well, hold on. So let, let me throw an asterisk in this. This truck has been getting better since the day I bought it. Um, I, well, I technically ordered it a year, over a year ago, but I got it in October and by, since then it's already had, I think, three software updates where it has gotten better. So my asterisk with this is, is I think that this truck will continue to get better and better. Uh, and the gripes that I have will probably go away over time, but that's neither here nor there. This is the truck that I have right now and I'm gonna review it as I have it right now. Um, so I don't know how long I've been talking, maybe 10 minutes, five minutes or so, but my miles per kilowatt average as I drive 33 miles around, 33 miles an hour around Miles Standish Park right now is 1.2. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> this thing is really, really bad at short trips around town. Now it will get better because what it's doing right now is it's warming up the battery, the massive, massive battery pack, and that chews up a ton of a ton of energy and it's also with that warming up the cabin um, which was actually relatively warm when i got into it but you got to remember the seats are cold the floor is cold the dash is cold it's going to warm all that stuff up chews up a lot of energy it will get better i know it will over time i don't know if it will over this drive because i'm not going to drive that far um, but this is a great example of why why i'm getting rid of this thing is uh, around town commuting whatever in winter it is incredibly inefficient and i am not going fast i just went 25 miles an hour around that corner you know like I, i'm not i'm not driving quickly so anyway uh let's talk about the things i like about it seats are good uh I, I like the quality i like the texture of them uh the ventilated seats are fantastic heated seats are fantastic um some people have complained i i've i've done long distances in my truck wow it's really snowy in here awesome um i've done long distances in my truck and some people have complained about like the gap here uh, it hasn't been an issue for me, but I'm sort of a natural sloucher, so it's not, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so now this is interesting. You guys can't see this, but this road is actually pretty snowy. And what I've found about this truck is it has a tendency, since it's so heavy, it does really well going straight in snow, but it has a really bad tendency to plow forward when you want to turn. And now that's with me modulating coming off the throttle. I don't just let off the throttle uh, and let full regen kick in. I'm not, that's not what's happening. Uh, it really just wants to plow forward almost like um, a, a, a Jeep with lockers front and rear. Um, I, yeah, it was borderline dangerous actually the other day as I was trying to turn into my driveway. Uh, so there is a decent amount of snow on the ground here because they don't plow mile standish apparently. Um, so that'll actually give, uh, give me an opportunity to talk a little bit more about the snow performance. But uh, so far I'm doing good and this is a very, very curvy area um, here. So, uh, and I'm just in all purpose mode. I didn't switch it to snow because there are patches of pavement and I don't, I don't know what sort of functionality, I don't know if it locks up those axles or whatever in snow, but I don't want to, I don't want to screw around with it. Um, let's see here. So the dashboard to me, 
uh, is too low. Uh, they clearly, uh, the Rivian probably read, you know, a book from like 1992 about, um, you know, what, uh, what an SUV, an off-roading vehicle should have for uh, check boxes and a low dash where you can see over it and you can see obstacles uh, is one of those items from then. It reminds me a lot of the my old uh, Land Cruiser 100 where the dash was oddly, oddly low. Now it's not that low in this, it's just kind of low. Um, it's a little bit too low for me. I'm six foot two uh, and my knee is very, very close to the dash, the screen, the corner of the screen here. I wish that they had brought it up just a little bit. I prefer my steering wheel to sort of be in front of me. Um, and it would allow me to push my seat a little bit further forward. I sit sort of oddly close for a person that's six foot two. I know it doesn't look like I do, but I do. Um, so that's a complaint that I have. Now, yeah, see, it was just trying to plow off. I mean, I'm, I was turning at 25 miles an hour in patchy snow and it wanted to plow straight, you know. This, it, that will get better with time. It just will. The software engineers are working on this thing constantly, um, but that's just what I notice right now. I mean, in two, three years, my sort of review of this thing will be borderline irrelevant, um, <coughs> assuming Rivian still exists. I don't know about that stock price. Uh, so let's see here. What else? Um, materials are nice. A lot of people have compared this, I, I've seen reviews where they compare this thing to like a Range Rover or Mercedes. It's not there, it just isn't. Like, it, they're nice materials. And interestingly enough, for a brand new car, a uh, brand new manufacturer even, um, there, there's really no rattles or anything in here. Uh, the build quality is really, really nice. But I'm not gonna say that the materials compete with uh, sort of equally priced uh, luxury SUVs or whatever. I mean, this truck is now, I think, 90 some odd thousand dollars i paid 77 uh, and it just it doesn't compete quality wise with uh, equal equal vehicles now with that said very nice materials um yeah i like them it's very simple you know i was kind of when i was thinking about doing this review i was actually kind of struggling a little bit because um there's not a lot to talk about now th these things have a ton of features for like adventurous overlanders I, i'm not any of that um you know it's the storage is incredible on it i will say that much uh, my tonneau cover came factory broken uh, so that was fun it literally never once worked uh, it's i've had to basically modify it so that i can pull the slats out manually so i can use my bed um but it's kind of just like in here it's it's a it's a screen and a screen and like some nice wood i don't know there's kind of not all that much to talk about i mean a big pan of pan of whatever pano glass um i don't like this i wish it just freaking had a sunroof you know i love sunroofs i i would i would have my sunroof open right now if it had one um, but it doesn't god i am really having to go very slowly through here i can't believe how uh, unplowed this is it's kind of cool though um and it is the truck does start to plow forward but then i could feel the software gripping and paddling it sort of that way that way but uh, i don't know for some turns it might be too late um so anyway um let's see oh all right so yeah i mean we could talk a little bit about the features i mean so this thing has like camp mode it's got uh, all sorts of <clears throat> electrical outlets one of which i actually use because <clears throat> Since uh, third-party chargers are so few and, well, not few and far between, but they're sort of off the beaten path a little bit, um, there's always stuff that I would like to see that I just kind of don't quite feel like walking to. I actually stuck a, uh, I bought a, a scooter um, and stuck that in the gear tunnel. And uh, there's a little uh, AC charger in there for it. So I've got my scooter always charged up for whenever I go to a third party charger uh, and I can scoot over to something uh, that might be a little bit too far for me to want to walk to. That was, that was pretty, that was really convenient. Um, the under, the hood storage is fantastic. I love that. I actually use that as like my trunk more often than anything. Um, Bed storage is fine. I mean, it's obviously, it's a very small bed. We all know that. Um, but what I will say is it's fit my motorcycles. I've got big adventure bikes. 
uh, in there just fine because the way that the tailgate opens, it, it, it's got a little sort of hinge that uh, extends it out as you drop it down. It's really great. So the, the, the usable bed space with the tailgate down is long enough for, for big proper motorcycles. Uh, and I could actually fit two back there, which is great. Um, all right, so I'm now at 1.34 miles per kilowatt average. Um, and I don't know, let's see what my average speed is. Let's take a look. So I've gone 8.2 miles and I've gone down 4% battery, but obviously there's a lot of uh, wavering in there. So this, my trip computer says I've been driving 17 minutes, averaging 29 miles an hour, and I'm doing 1.25 miles per kilowatt. 3.3 used to go eight miles. So that uh, the math on that just doesn't make a lot of sense. But um, so I don't know what's right. All I can tell you is I've been going 200 miles, 220 miles from 100 to zero in this thing. Uh, and that's killing me. Um, so let's see here. Do I have anything else to talk about in my Rivian? Uh, what I can talk about is, so I'm, I'm trading it in for a Rubicon diesel Jeep Gladiator. Uh, it is fully, fully loaded. Yeah, plowing, plowing through. Yeah, oh, Jesus, God. Uh, it's fully loaded, uh, particularly with, with uh, ad adaptive cruise control. That is the most important thing for me because I, I commute into it. And now, uh, what a lot of people might be saying is these two cars aren't even on the same planet. Um, and in a lot of ways they aren't. I mean, the, Rub uh, I'm sorry, the Rivian, um, drives leagues better. I've had a Rubicon and I've had, I mean, I've, I'm sorry, I've had a Gladiator, um, and I've had a JL. Uh, I had, my Gladiator was the stick shift 3.6. I traded it in because I hated the 3.6 with every bone in my body. It's the worst engine ever fit to a Jeep, uh, and I, I just couldn't tolerate it. So I traded it in for a JL diesel, um, and the J I really, really liked the diesel in the JL. Uh, I should have gotten a Gladiator um, because, again, I like to throw my, I, I keep, yeah, a Gladiator, because again, I like to throw my motorcycle in the bed. Um, I like to tow my boat with it, whatever. At the time, I had another truck, I had a Ram, um, so that wasn't an issue, but I should have consolidated those and just gotten gotten a Gladiator, and who knows, I might have still had that to this day. But so in a lot of ways, these, the, the two trucks are not even remotely competitive. The Gladiator uh, will handle nowhere near as well as this will. The ride will be no, as, nowhere near as good as this is. The adaptive cruise control slash driver assist, I mean, driver assist is non-existent in the Gladiator other than like beeping at you or slamming on the brakes. Uh, if you're about to crash, there's no lane keep, there's no any of that stuff. Um, there is only adaptive cruise control and the adaptive cruise control on the Gladiator will disengage. It's only adaptive cruise control to a stop. It will disengage uh, if you reach zero miles an hour uh, for more than like five seconds, something like that. Um, so for basically all of those reasons, I'm going to miss my Rivian. Uh, but uh, the, the main reason that I'm trading again is because the Gladiator can be driven 300 miles, stop for five minutes, be filled with magical juice that makes it continues on go continue on going and you can continue on going. The Rivian does not have that ability, unfortunately. I don't know, I might regret this. I might completely regret this. I was telling my wife last night, I might, uh, and I might, um, but I'm, I'm gonna do it. And the only reason I'm willing to do this trade is because they're giving me what I paid for the Rivian because the Rivian, the prices went up and I got in on the pre-price pre, uh, pre hike pricing. So I paid $77,000 for this truck uh, with a couple options, but it's basically a base adventure model um, with 21s. So I got the 21s because they're the most efficient and even at that, uh, they're still not really doing the trick for me. Um, so, you know, in some pretty major ways, the Rivian completely blows away the, uh, the Gladiator, but, uh, they're also, they are highly competitive, uh, in a couple ways. First off, um, they are the two most capable pickup trucks being sold today 
uh, and probably will be for some time. Um, people will argue that a Raptor is as capable as a Rubicon Gladiator. It isn't. Uh, it, a Raptor is very good for like going, ripping around dunes and things like that, whatever, but it is not a rock crawler. It's way too big. Um, way, way, way too big to do any sort of rock crawling or real sort of off-roading in. Now, I'm sure that people have found a way to make it work, uh, but for the most part, it really is not competitive with these two trucks. Um, this truck effectively is very similar to the, Rub to the Rubicon in that, either Rubicon, the, the JT or the JL, in that it's, while it's got four motors, it doesn't have solid axles that can lock or anything like that, the four motors can really very effectively simulate lockers. Now, I say that again with an asterisk because there are situations that this truck can end up in where it does not, for some odd reason, it cannot gain traction um, and it will not actually lock, lock, I know that there's no actual physical locking, but it will not actually spin both wheels at the same rate to simulate lockers. Uh, and with that, I've seen this truck, I've both seen mine, and I've seen a bunch of videos of these trucks uh, spinning one front wheel and one opposite back wheel uh, and not climbing up whatever sort of obstacle there's, they're meant to be climbing up. A Rubicon, either Gladiator or JL, would not have that problem because they have actual mechanical lockers that lock the front and wheel, the front and rear wheels together, as well as you know a diff lock, a center diff lock, or whatever. It's called a transfer case in America, you know, whatever. Who cares? <clears throat> um, so in that regard, the JT and JL. I'm, I'm just going to talk about the JT, but in that regard, the JT is a more capable off-road truck. There's, uh, but with that said, now I'm going to own this. The JT has a huge, huge bed by compared with this uh, that drags a lot. Uh, I had one. It was uh, lifted two and a half inches on 37s, and I dragged the bed a lot when I would go rock crawling. Um, so it's not a great rock crawler. Now I'm not going to claim that this thing is. The problem with this truck is that uh, you're very, very limited in tire options. Uh, the, the lift height is what it is. There are no lift kits for this truck. Now it can get very tall because if it's, it's got like a massive swing in uh, air suspension c capability, you know, between dropping low and sport mode, which is intolerably stiff by the way, to very high in off-road mode, um, which is also intolerably stiff, but I have found that the default setting of like, uh, I think high in off-road mode, uh, provides one of the smoothest off-roading uh, experiences I've ever had, and that's without even airing down, which is really nice. Um, but so that's why I'm sort of comparing these two trucks, is because even though, look, we all know the Jeep is gonna ride worse, it's got solid axles, it's slower, particularly if you get the 3.6. I mean, it might as well be going backwards if you have the 3.6. Um, it's louder, uh, it's way more roly-poly, um, it doesn't have adjustable suspension. It doesn't have a sport mode. Uh, it doesn't really have a, a driver assist system. I mean, it gets blown away by the Rivian in all of those regards, but there are two crucial ways in which it doesn't. Um, again, the ability to just put magical juice in it and continue on driving in a matter of five, 10 minutes uh, and off-road capability. So that's sort of why I'm comparing them. Um, so with all that said, let's see, how far am I from home? I'll just keep driving. Why not? Keep driving and talking as best I can. Now, I've been driving this whole time in all-purpose mode. Uh, and it's, unfortunately, so I live near Miles Standish State Park, which is just like <clears throat> an incredible racetrack, basically. Uh, but it's full of snow today, which is good and bad for testing purposes because I wanted to bring up the snow performance thing, but um, it's bad because I can't touch sport mode. I mean, there's not a chance I can't start ripping around here. What I have found in sport mode is I very, very rarely use it um, because it is intolerably stiff. Uh, it like intolerably stiff. I mean, and this is a very, very smooth road and any little crack in the road, whatever, will absolutely be spine breaking. So I don't bother with sport mode. Uh, and that's what I found with this truck is 
there are two suspension settings. They're soft, they're soft and stiff. Soft is too soft, um, yet still can't handle sort of quick hit, cracks in the road, um, potholes, you, you know, whatever. Speed bumps, very, it handles very well, but you know, any sort of quick sort of bang, like a hole drops, a, a wheel drops into a hole, whatever, uh, it just it just doesn't handle those well um, but for the most part it's good now with that said it's like I said it's a little bit too soft in soft mode from what in my experience in stiff mode it's utterly intolerable I mean forget about it uh, it's it's really it, you can't you just can't ride around in this thing in stiff mode I mean you can't even do it on the highway because you'll feel you will feel the contours in the highway it's so incredibly stiff I think what they need to do is find a medium mode uh, and, and let users do that. Now again, I bring up my asterisk, uh, they actually just released a software update that made the suspension settings better. Uh, they adjusted the damping and it is better, it absolutely is, um, but it's not perfect and I don't know if it ever will be, I mean it's a 7,000 pound truck. Um, so uh, you know, I don't know how you make the suspension of that compliant. But I, I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't build Rivians, you know, so who knows. Um, let's see, I'm not going to pop on the highway and talk and do the driver assist, but I will say a lot of people complain about the driver assist in this thing. I think it's really good. Um, and again, it's one of those things that has gotten better uh, with software updates. Try not to spray your grandma. Um, it has absolutely gotten better with software updates. Um, there was, I live south of Boston, I take Route 3 up to, uh, to 93 North into Boston two times a week. Um, and there were a couple sections on Route 3 North where the driver assist would, would completely bail out, boop, 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 full alerting, ah, grab the wheel now, you're gonna die. Um, and what do I do here? Can I take a left? Hmm. No, I just kind of moved here, so no, I don't think it's this one. I think I can go to the next one. Uh, anyway, uh, and so you got to grab the wheel. And what I found with this thing is you you pop the stock up and you pop it back down real fast, and it switches it over just to uh, normal adaptive cruise mode. Uh, but those two spots have gone away uh, with software updates. So again, great example of what Rivian is doing with this truck. Uh, and now for the most part, I can make it completely up Route 3 to 93 North um, on, a da on the driver assist mode. Um, now what's really, really annoying about this driver assistance system, and this might be, I've heard people complain about this before. To me, I think that there is a very good reason for this. Um, but what's really, really annoying about this driver assistance system is it only, A, it only works on highways, and B, it only works on mapped highways. So it's almost like GM Super Cruise, except they do not have the power of GM behind them um, mapping these highways. Now, I think that they did this for litigious reasons. I can see very clearly on my display right now that this driver assistance system can see these lanes and sees, sees the van in front of me and could almost guaranteed follow these lanes just fine. Uh, I can, I've also noted this on the highway, when the highway there's a little bit of construction where the lane moves away from where it would normally be, the truck handles that just fine. I think they did this for litigious reasons because they are a brand new car company and if their driver assistance system kills somebody, they're kaput, that is it for them. So I think this driver assistance system will get leagues and leagues and leagues better over time. It's got all the sensors Tesla's do, do. Uh, they've got a huge backing, and they are investing tons and tons of energy into uh, t uh, uh, engineering their software platform. This, the, the, just in the three months that I've had it, this driver assistance system has gotten better, and I think at, after, at a, after a while, this driver assistance system will absolutely uh, probably, well, I don't know. I mean, this is a hard gamble to make, but it's certainly capable of being used on back roads. Uh, I don't know if they ever will unlock that, um, but I wish that they would because it's very clearly, like it's, it sees the lane. I can see it seeing the lane. It's following the van. There's no reason that this couldn't be in driver assist mode right now. Um, so actually maybe I will have a chance to pop on the highway here. Um, so now let's see here, I've gone 
take a look. So this has been a very, very slow drive. Averaging 29 miles an hour, I've been driving for 30 minutes. At my efficiency, it's claiming is 1.4 miles per kilowatt uh, with a distance of 15.2 miles. So, wait a second. That math doesn't make any sense, does it? <laughs> I've been driving for 30 minutes. I've gone 15 miles. Yeah, 30 miles an hour. I guess it does make sense. I wasn't a great student. Um, <clears throat> so uh, one nice thing, I'm, so, uh, the single pedal driving experience in this thing is fantastic. Uh, I don't think I've touched the brake this entire drive, if I'm totally honest. There are two modes. There is normal and then max. I put it on max, even though max can actually make me, the driver, a little nauseous every now and then. Uh, I'll still use it. Uh, and it actually automatically holds you as well, um, which is really, really nice. Uh, again, feature I'm really gonna miss uh, in going back to an ICE vehicle, particularly the Gladiator, which has nothing like that. I mean, Mercedes have, you know, auto hold, things like that, but uh, the Gladiator does not have any of that stuff. Um, so again, I'm slowing down here. I'm modulating the pedal. I'm not letting off of the pedal. Um, though that is a game that I do like to play every now and then is see if you can bullseye the stoplight location by just letting off the pedal. Uh, I just modulated the pedal, came to a stop, uh, and I'm stopped now, uh, and the vehicle is just holding me perfectly in place. Now what I've noticed in, let's, so uh, this chart says, shows my last, fi last 15 minutes average. About halfway through the chart, let's call it seven and a half minutes, the what happened what i've noticed happening is the efficiency is way down for reasons i can only predict are warming up the battery and then at a certain point it goes it starts going way up and about seven and a half minutes ago it started going way up so now my efficiency it's still below the two that is needed to get like a whopping let's call it 200 and let's be generous and call it 260 miles which it isn't um, because again two times 127 is what is it 154 um it's just not uh, it's nowhere near you know what they sort of estimate but two is sort of what i generally hope for uh, i'm nowhere near two but i am significantly above where i was before it, it is going up you know now it's at 1.4 um, but again this is just the last 15 minutes it's not the entire drive i wish that this would just show the whole drive um, but it doesn't uh so entertainment system is really nice navigation is pretty terrible you'll notice that i have this thing sitting here and usually what i have is an old surface duo using their hotspot with Waze and Google Maps up because their driver, their uh, navigation is, is pretty poor. It'll, um, it's too aggressive about trying to drive you around traffic without knowing what the conditions are on the side roads. So this thing will, wow dude. Um, so this thing will take you to, so Boston has the second worst traffic in the nation right now, fourth in the world, go Boston. Um, it will take, it'll attempt to take me off of the highway once I get to where Route 3 meets 93 and take me all back roads to my office. It's about 10 minutes of back roads. Now, if you've ever driven 10 miles in Boston, um, not nowhere near the highway, you will know it is a miserable experience. Miserable. I mean, you're, you're lucky if you can average five miles uh, every like half hour. So maybe you can average 10 miles an hour. I don't know that you can. Um, so it's horrendous. So this thing tries to sort of navigate me. It tries to be ways like and avoid the traffic, but then it just drives me into worse, uh, in worse conditions. So um, I do use it for sort of long distance travel because again, it'll preheat the batteries for supercharging, whatever you want to call it. Um, annoyingly, now again, this comes with my asterisk because this software is going to get better, but annoyingly, it, um, it doesn't let you select the, as you're navigating, it doesn't let you say, hey, I wanna stop by at uh, so-and-so charging station or what is the status of this charging station? How fast does this charging station charge? So I always have to open up my phone and check that stuff. Um, let's, just for kicks, I'm gonna drive past my exit here, but um, so let's, this is, I'll certainly miss this. The accelerating power of this thing is, 
Uh, it doesn't feel, you know, it's nowhere near that of like a P100D or like a really, really fast electric car, but it is fast. Um, it does throw you back. My wife says it still makes her nauseous, which is part of the goal, right? So, uh, oh, fuck. Uh, whoop, state trooper. All right. <laughs> I was just about to gun it past him. Uh, all right, so I'm in full driver assist mode right now, uh, and it's it's taking the wheel. You know, obviously, i got to rest my hand on it. Um, it's taking the wheel. I'm, I'm actually going to pop off of my exit here, but it's taking the wheel. It does really, really well. This is a, this is a corner right here. You can't really see it, obviously, but I am cornering, um, and it does it does nicely. I mean, it deals with it nicely. Um, yeah, it's turning left here. It stays more or less in the lane. I just wish that they would ena enable this functionality on back roads. I mean, it it doesn't use there's no way that it's using like lidar maps or anything like that it's it's reading the lanes it definitely is because i've seen it react to lane changes that there's no way that they have mapped so it's reading the lanes i just wish that they would turn, enable this functionality on back roads and maybe they will eventually i don't know if they don't that's a big mistake because having driver assistance on back roads is really really nice um yeah, I mean, like, it's it's dealing with the cones. It's kind of dealing with everything here. Now the cones are just over there, whatever. But it's a nice system, honestly. I, I wish that they would uh, enable it on back roads. Um, but, yeah, so anyway, the nav is pretty much trash. I wish that it would also save uh, where... Now, uh, with that said, the system is very responsive. It's a nice system. Don't get me wrong. But And the nav will get better over time. It does have traffic on it, which is nice. I wish it would save my zoom level. Um, it doesn't. It refuses to save my zoom level, so it ends up being borderline useless-ish. You've got a massive screen and it really, really zoomed in on your location, which is really dumb to me. Um, Spotify integration is nice, but it's really just a band-aid for... Jesus fucking Christ, Camry. Holy fuck. <sighs> yep, slow down. Whoa. Oh my God, dude. This Camry in front of me has come to damn near a stop with the cars in front of him a solid hundred yards away. <clears throat> okay, okay, calm down. Uh, Spotify integration is nice, though it's really just a band-aid for not having Android Auto and CarPlay. It should have Android Auto and CarPlay. It's stupid that it doesn't. I don't know if there's a licensing fee. There probably is, uh, but they should have paid it and figured out a way to get it in there because even if your navigation is as good as Tesla's, which is pretty good, um, it, you still don't have police on it. Uh, I want Waze on my screen. I always end up having to bring up Waze on a side little phone or whatever in Tesla's and Rivian's because uh, there's no Waze integration. I just want Waze. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of fancy jazz you can do here. You can select all your drive modes. Um, like I said, the HVAC system is kind of trash in there. Uh, you've got all sorts of stuff you can configure. You open up the hood, open up the charge port, you can configure the lighting, blah, 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 blah. And it is nice and responsive. Um, it's a very nice system. I... I don't mind that they did the horizontal screen because it has an instrument cluster, cluster, whatever, it's got an instrument screen. Um, so that's been okay with me, but had they not done the instrument cluster, I would have been really, really annoyed if they went the, the Tesla route. Now again, okay, so HVAC, a great example of it sucking. Um, I'm a little cold. I set the temperature to 70 degrees, which in every other vehicle I've ever owned has been almost a little warm. I usually bounce back and forth between 69 and 70. And the HVAC is now blowing cold air at me again. I don't understand why. Why are you blowing cold air at me? Just stop blowing hot air and let it cool. You don't need to blow cold air. It's stupid. <sighs> okay, so I'm getting close to my house. Um, I have averaged, let's see here, auto wipers are not very good. <laughs> um, I end up having to kick them on a lot manually, but again, this is stuff they'll make better over time. Uh, all right. So I'm pulling back into my street here. So I've gone 19 miles and I've chewed up so I started at 63, I am now down to 53. And that is driving 30 miles an hour around back roads, okay? 
30 miles an hour around back roads, coasting as much as I possibly could, and I've gone through 10% of the battery going 19 miles. Um, and so with that said, yesterday I did several small short trips, um, two, three miles at a shot, and I went through another 10% of the battery going 10 miles. It's absurd. This thing is so inefficient in winter, it's just completely intolerable to me. So, honestly, that's the vast majority of the reason that I'm switching. Now, this might have been my last drive in my, in my Rivian. I am trading it in remotely for this Gladiator, and allegedly they're coming to pick it up at some point. Um, so we'll see what happens there, but um, yeah. Uh, honestly, it's it's a great truck. It just um, I don't think it's New England ready. It uh, the range in winter is just terrible. Now, if you only use it as a commuter, you don't drive distances. It'd be awesome. I mean, honestly, it would be really great if as long as you got a charger at your house or at your work, whatever. Uh, me personally, I have a charger very close to my favorite bar um, and very close to my office. Um, so I charge at those locations while my wife charges at the house. Um, but it's really the range that's killing me with this thing. I mean, there are annoyances about it. I do wish the dash was taller. I wish it had a sunroof. I wish, I wish the rear window would open. Um, I wish the driver pedal was a little less springy. <laughs> really stupid complaint. I wish there was a glove box. Um, but these are all really, really minor complaints. The wireless charger here sucks. You will put your phone there and it will almost immediately leave the charging location. I mean, it's not even, like they put like a pad here, but it's not even really sticky at all. I don't really get what, what happened there. Um, yeah, there's something up here. I've always wondered what that is, if it's an infrared sensor reading my eyeballs, making sure I'm looking at the road. I don't think so. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's the range, you know? So I'm, I'm now parked, says the last 15 minutes, I've done 1.7. Um, 1.7 miles per kilowatt in the last 15 minutes. I mean, I've been going 30 miles an hour. <laughs> this thing should be just getting amazing, amazing range in those conditions, and it isn't. Now, if I was to take this on the highway, I can tell you exactly what would happen. Because I do this two times a week with an 80 mile round, uh, 80 mile round trip to my office. What happens is, is for the first 15, 20 minutes or so of that commute, the car will get 1.5-ish miles per kilowatt uh, as it warms up the battery. Once the battery warms, it gets up to maybe 1.7 or so um, once I approach the traffic and my speed lowers to about 50 miles an hour, uh, and then rinse repeat. So there's a big inefficiency here with this thing where it's cooking, it's warming up this battery every single time you start it in winter, um, and that just kind of doesn't work. Um, you know, for, for short distance travel. But again, you know, if you got a charger at your house, I mean, you might be fine, it might be fine for you. Uh, to me, it annoys me um, because I don't get to charge at my house. My wife's car is always charging at the house. So, but that's a, my, that's a me problem, whatever. So uh, anyway, so that's, that's my sort of Rivian review. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, feel free to post any comments or questions, whatever. Uh, and thanks for watching. Bye. All right, there she is. Actually, oddly looks uh, smaller than I expected it to. My last Gladiator was a Pumpkin 20, I think it was a 20, I think it was a 20, 19, uh, 2020, uh, with a two and a half inch and uh, a half inch in lift. Jesus, that's the price. Um, from Evo, I think it was, and uh, with 37s on it, 37 KO2s. Uh, and this one looks oddly small. <laughs> Thinking about that, uh, I might have to go to some 37s. But uh, I have legitimately just started it. Uh, I am pumping up the tires from my Rivian um, because the, uh, well, I guess I didn't hit the wrong button, um, because the transporter had to air it down to fit under bridges or something, apparently. Um, <clears throat> so that's happening. Swapped over my plates. 
I haven't swapped over any of my stuff yet. I guess I can grab my, uh... oh, it's so nice and warm in here. Grab my USB-C cable. All right. Let's walk around there, man. So it's on a two inch AEV lift. Um, I wasn't able to see in pictures online if there was a space lift. No, it's not, it's coiled. That's good. Uh, Fox shots, probably extensions, I'm guessing. Yeah, I guess not. Um, interesting. So they just cut the screen to shot to stop shot length. Um, which is a little questionable, but uh, I can grab it and check it out how it goes. So, um, yeah, just airing it up. Uh, I've got all sorts of resetting of things to do in here. Um, I'll reset the Uconnect, um, do all that fun stuff. Uh, and then take her for a spin. Oh, oh, oh. oh man, this is <laughs> this is so different than the Rivian. This is comical. Right. Let's get this configured here. So, all right. So let me stop this one, and I'll resume once I take her for a spin.